What's going on growers? James Piccioni coming to you live from Jersey. It's an absolutely beautiful spring day here and a lot of the prior investments that we've made are starting to pay off. So today I want to bring you through the garden, show you the continued progression and also what we're harvesting today. Let's go! This year has been our most abundant by far. We're harvesting more than we have ever have and we're harvesting more fun than we ever have. Tuck's just relaxing a little bit today under the cherry tree. I said it's a beautiful day, but it's also kind of hot. So you guys know he always digs his holes to cool himself off. It's funny underneath the trees, but we're not too worried about it because this is a big old tree. It's got big roots. I have so much stuff I want to show you though. Let me show you this peach tree right behind you. It's like, it's got loaded with fruit. It's got more than it ever has. I think Tuck's going to come with us. And it's just exciting to see, you know, after putting in years and years ago to see just the amount of fruit it has. And look at these. That one uh, fell from the Cuculio. It got bit, but these ones don't have any bites. You can see I'm just using a little bit of this uh, surround spray. So in the future, I may use a little more to make sure that I'm really eliminating the curculio, but it seems to be working. So we're excited. And if I give you a shot of this whole peach tree, it's just absolutely massive. Like you'll be just blown away by how much fruit it has. I mean, I'm pretty tall and it just, it dwarfs me. But notice one thing, the sun is beaming on me. That's how we want it, nice and open with a lot of light. This way we get light to the actual peaches so we don't have any fungal issues and peach leaf curls, stuff like that. And this is asparagus right next to me. We stick those in a bunch of different places, but I also have locations where we have designated asparagus beds because that's really the way you want to do it. In the back, we've got these uh, raised beds doing real nice just always filling gaps in space. So again, notice where I'm standing here, I'm getting just beamed with sunlight. If we see that, we add raised beds. I've got some sunflowers, they'll apex tall and, and make sure that they're getting a lot of light. Back here is a young, uh, what do you call that? A young pawpaw tree too. We've got a few of those coming up for my neighbor. And then we've got a bunch of currants and stuff that are ready. So we're snacking on a bunch of these white currants. I love white currants, they're so good. So your black currants are gonna be your, the ones with the most extreme intense flavor. Your white currants are gonna be more delicate. I tend to like these white ones better. I really don't like the red ones that much at all, but the black and white are my favorite. White's so good. Mm. Mm. I believe this one is the white imperial. Let me take you over to some of these raspberries though. Before we move over to the raspberries, I wanted to give you a view of the food forest. Just a different perspective, show you what it's like to hang out in here. It really has become its own little oasis, its own little uh, paradise in the middle of suburbia. And me and Tuck love being out here and sharing with all of you. Like I mentioned, the peaches are doing well, but let's move our way through the forest more and check out some more of the stuff. The raised beds have a lot of stuff that need to be harvested. So I'm gonna be harvesting a bunch of peas, some carrots, some lettuces, and an insane amount of strawberries. Uh, I've got so many strawberries this year, I'm having a tough time keeping up picking them. But I am so crazy that I just decided to plant even more. So I've got more strawberries under here. For me, I can never have enough. I've got friends coming over and helping me pick them, so it's, it's a lot of fun when, when we're all out there, you know, eating the strawberries right from the plants. And this peach tree is the one that is just ridiculous. I think this is going to be our biggest producer. It's looking beautiful, and I'm excited to eat the fruit right from it. I love doing it. Blackberries right here, doing fantastic. Those still have a good amount of time, but it's berry season. We've got strawberries, we got currants, we're eating raspberries, these uh, yellow and raspberries. Soon the black caps will be coming. Let's snack on a few of these. I'm just gonna grab a couple of these yellow and raspberries and they're some of my favorite ones. They get this nice like golden color when they're ripe. And when raspberries are ripe, they'll come off easily. So you don't really have to force them off too much. It's kind of just like a little soft pop off. And these are, again, some of my favorite raspberries. That's why I kept this variety. So sweet, so good. Mm. And they just like melt in your mouth too. Like that tiny, tiny bit of tartness so fantastic, and I, and I see something moving back there. Tuck's like creeping around back there, I think. He's always finding something else to do in there though. And I wanna bring you over to this gooseberry bush because this is one of those berries that's probably not as popular, you guys might not know a lot about, but that's because it's one of those they don't really sell in the store. They don't really sell them in the store because they don't ship well. That's really the main reason. After you pick these, you gotta eat them pretty quick because they don't ship or store well. But they've got a nice little flavor and people love making them with pies. I've never done pies with it, but it probably would be really good. Mm. Like tarty, sweet, just a unique flavor. Really, really good. Let me bring you over to some of the raised beds and stuff. Where we're actually going to be harvesting some of the things. Before I do, though, I wanted to show you some of the grapes. Like, there are so many grapes in here that I, I'm not doing a good job of thinning. I have to come through and thin a lot of this out because we've got to make sure the grape, actual grapes, 
have access to sunlight, direct sunlight, and also airflow to make sure we're not getting any fungal issues, and that they can also, you know, get enough airflow and light too. So right here we have another current that I stuck in. This is the, again that same one, the white imperial one, with all the currents down here. I love this flavor. This is one of my favorite currents. I've gone through a lot of different kinds of berry plants, berry bushes that they sell, and I've kind of ended up with some of my favorites. So these ones are good. You'll notice they have a, those seeds, a, lot, a good amount of seeds in them on the inside, but they're still really good. It looks like Tuck wants a snack too. So the raised beds look fantastic. The Lassenado kale, Dino kale, my favorite tasting kale. Then I did the blue, the dazzling blue kale, because look, look at the color of that. Dazzling is right, it's just insane. And the other underside, it's so beautiful. I love the way it looks and it tastes good too. Mm. Good flavor. Not as good as the dino though. Peas, they're an insane amount of peas everywhere. And we're trying to stay on top of picking as many as we can so they continue to flower like I mentioned in the other video. But I know Tuck wants something. Well, I bet he does. So we got a lot of carrots here. I'm gonna start harvesting some of these carrots. These carrots, look how big I got them early. <laughs> Look at that guy. We got them so big so early because we started them in those hooped houses right here. So those hinged hoop houses, we talked about extending the season on both ends. So that's one of the ideas. This one we won't give to Tuck, I'll get him a smaller one because we've just got so many to harvest. I think this one's pretty small. A little bent, this must be the one obtuse one. This is like the yellowish one, Tuck wanna bite? Tuck doesn't mind it on the size though. There you go boy. So we'll let him scurry off and do his own thing. He's gonna find some shade or something probably because he wants to just relax in the shade, eat some of his fresh carrots because the thing about Tuck is we don't give him these things, he earned all this stuff. So he's the one who's out here every single day protecting the garden, cornering groundhogs, you know, chasing away squirrels, chasing away chipmunks. So this guy's nonstop, he doesn't take many days off. As Tuck is finishing his carrot, we're gonna grab some more carrots over here. I want to harvest some of these and replant because I've got carrots that are staggered in the other garden I'll show you. So we're just going to be harvesting carrots for a good amount of time. Some of them are probably ready. This guy's pretty fat. Love the color of that one. That's a beautiful color, especially next to that. And see, so scrab a couple more. Here's the other, the one obtuse, the yellow. So we've got the orange, the yellow, and the purple all right next to each other. And we're doing that square foot guarding method where I have 16 in a square foot. So we've been eating them like, you know, every couple of days, but we've gotten to the point in the garden where I can't, you know, we can't eat it as much as stuff is growing now. We've passed that point. So like the lettuces too. This one's almost starting to flower. It's getting so late. So I gotta make sure I'm harvesting them so they don't go to waste or anything. I'm trying to keep up with it though. Look at that, what a beautiful head. Then we'll drop that in and then we'll get another one like this one. Looks good, put that in. I got a lot more to harvest and there's just so many things I want to show you in the other food forest. Before we move in though, I gotta show you these tomatoes. These are like my pride and joy tomatoes back here. Look at the size of these things, they're ridiculous. I've never had tomatoes this big this early. So I'm super excited. Uh, again, the hinge tube house, it, it was huge in getting us started early and everything's just growing really well. I'm gonna show you guys in a video coming up how to tie, how I tie my tomatoes and how I'm tying them this year. So if you wanna see that, let me know down in the comments. Just spam it down there that you wanna see it. And also do not forget to spam hearts in the comments for Tuck. Let him know that you guys are here mainly to watch him. But let's go over to the uh, other food forest and just grab some food. Now we're stepping into the new food forest and in here we've got so many annuals. The level of production is the highest it's ever been. And the amount of strawberries, it's, it's crazy. I'm gonna give you an overview of the strawberries and show you some of the harvests that we got just the last couple of days. And we have to come out here every single day to get the strawberries because they're just ripening so quick. Looks like Savannah's coming out of the hen house. She's broody right now, so we're trying to break her out of that. We've got a bunch of zucchinis over here, some cucumbers, cantaloupes, sunflowers, that small, short, little stout variety of sunflower. I'm excited to see the flowers on that one. I think it's gonna be a beautiful one. And then this is the old pear tree strawberries, some new pear trees and stuff we put in. Here's our bigger zucchinis over here. We're already getting some zucchinis and those will be ripe very soon. The flowers just need to open and then pollinate. And look at those. Real excited, that's my favorite variety. And then you can see the, the sunflowers there too. And the strawberries, I'm trying to keep up on watering them because they need a lot of water at this time of the year because they have so many strawberries. So it's hot right now. So it looks like they're kind of taking a break wilting a little bit but again i'm trying to come out here and water them as much as i can 
There just are so many of them. And this isn't my favorite variety, the Shuxin. So good. But I'll give you a clip again of some of the strawberries that we're harvesting. And the blueberries too. These ones are gonna be ripening pretty soon. They're getting large right here. So this is only, I think, a second or third year plant. It doesn't take a long to get some of your berries. And some of your fruit trees are a little different. We have a saying when it comes to fruit trees. First they sleep, then they creep, and then they leap. So essentially the first year they sleep and you get a little bit of growth, then they leap. And then that fourth year is when you could sometimes get fruit production. So let me just bring you around for some more of the stuff. I want to show you the production on this misty blueberry. Look at the, look at the amount of blueberries on it. It's got almost like more blueberries than leaves. But this is like a second or third year plant, so it should be able to maintain this and it'll be okay. When you have this much fruit on it, you might want to keep up with watering though, because you just got to think about how much water has to go just into the fruit production. This one too, this is a Liberty. So this is a different variety, but it still has a lot of berries on it. It looks good. We must have picked good locations and planted them well. Then as I move over here, we've got some more strawberries. And this variety of strawberries is in high production right now. You can see this, if I move my hands, look at this. And some of them are big. Like, I'll be able to find some big ones. Here's a big one here. I'll be, some of them are like, you know, that's not a bad, that's not a bad size bite. And it's relatively ripe. And there's some huge ones over there too. So let me just have a bite and then we'll move over to the, uh, the square foot beds. Mm. Mm. Definitely a mouthful, but look at these apples. Looking real nice. Excited for this apple variety. And the square foot beds, it's just, I, I'm blown away every time I come out here by the level of production. My garden is almost like a pet in a sense, in a way. It's every day I like to come out here and check the growth of it and the progression of it and see how it's doing and do what I can to be out here. So the garden has really become a part of me and Tuxo. Just to watch the growth of it feels amazing. And I feel like when you come out here and you, like, you're so thankful for everything that things grow better. I think it was Bill Mollison or someone said, like go out into your garden every day and just be absolutely shocked by it. Because when you are shocked by the garden, the plants wanna shock you even more. So it's like, go out there with a sense of amazement. Let me get some of this lettuce right here. This is a Paris Island Romaine. Look at that, beautiful color. So great for making Caesar salads and stuff. Let me grab one of those heads. Nice lettuce head. And pretty, too, pretty clean too which is convenient. So we'll drop that one in. I still, I'm going to harvest these two for the video. And uh, I still got more stuff back here that I have to harvest. More of those lettuces over there. And let me show you what happens when you don't get on the lettuce in time, which is super unfortunate, but it's my fault. It starts to actually seed. So what happens when you get this, lettuces that start to go to seed, they start to get way more bitter. So they're not even as good to eat. And you'll notice it because this lettuce is just started to get very tall and from the center grow. So this one's going to seed. It's probably not gonna taste as good. We'll save this one for the chickens though, for my little queen chicken, Percy, and her sister, Savannah. And then here's the carrots that are staggered. So these ones are probably starting to ripen already. So that's why I, wanna, I wanted to pick some, some of those carrots because these ones, are, they're all on their way. Yeah, the growth on these carrots looks great. I don't think we have any ready as I feel around the bases. They're still a little small, so that's okay. For the square foot method, we've got 16, four rows of four in carrots. And right here we've got the cucumbers growing right underneath the uh, grapes and the cucumbers are just doing fantastic. And I'm gonna back up. We've got cucumbers planted about every six inches. Here we've got the green beans and they're doing excellent. These are gonna start flowering real soon. Soon we're gonna have so many green beans. So it, it's nice going from peas to green beans. You know, you're making sure you always get that fresh little crunch. I love it. And right here we've got the tomato chalice that we just built and it's doing Perfect, it's doing fantastic. I have another trellis that I built that I just have to drop in. I just haven't had the time to do that yet. So these tomatoes are doing real well though. I wanna bring you over to the section in the back where we've got uh, the biggest brassicas that I've ever grown before. I can't wait to get these cabbages. It's like, <laughs> I feel like they're gonna be massive. Before I bring you over to those brassicas though, I just wanted to grab another head of lettuce. I'm gonna to have to harvest all these heads because this one is getting so close to flowering too. So we'll take this out and just cut it all the way at the base. And that'll be a nice fresh salad too. Back here, we've got this uh, ground cherry. So this is a unique one. I think I showed it last week, but if you guys didn't notice, the ground cherries are fun. That's like a, a little berry, something unique that you're not gonna really get in the stores. And one of those just little things that you really appreciate when you grow your own food because you can't really get it anywhere else. And then <laughs> look at this mammoth. I think it's called mammoth parsley. The size of these parsley leaves, like this is, they're huge. They're almost like too big, but I don't know if I'm gonna grow it next year, but I think it's still cool. And the calendulas are so close to opening. This is the, supposed to be the white calendula. So I'm excited to see the way the flowers look. These are like marigolds, great companions. And this little lettuce head, let's grab this guy. Not sure what variety this is, but 
It looks pretty unique. Very tight, heavy. Yeah, it looks like a good one. It'll make a nice salad too. So we're definitely gonna have to re get a new bowl or empty the bowl out and get some more stuff. But let's keep moving and I see our first flower on our cucumbers right there. Super exciting. <laughs> I can't wait. I love cucumbers. We're gonna be juicing a lot of cucumbers this year because we have so much stuff. As long as the cucumbers produce well and I think they will. And then more, more strawberries and stuff over here. And then blueberries we have hidden in. Oh my gosh, look at the size of the strawberry. Oh my God, biggest one of the year. Holy, ha <laughs> ha holy. Yeah, that's, a, that's one of those garden gifts that you just never expect, but sometimes you're just blessed with. I don't even know if I wanna eat this one. I, I couldn't fit it in my mouth in one bite. That's a good strawberry when you can't fit into your mouth in one bite. So I don't even know if I wanna eat this one right now. I gotta put it in here somewhere. And then, oh man, I'm running out of space. And then all these uh, strawberries back here too, looking fantastic. Just so many in here. Over here, carpeted with more strawberries. I can never get enough of them. You guys should try to count and list how many times I said strawberries this video, because it's gonna be ridiculous. And then uh, the cabbages, like, it's just the best they've ever looked. They blow me away. I, like I mentioned, I just come out here sometimes just to look at this stuff. Look at the color of the leaves and like the character. Look at the character of that plant. Like the, the coloration of the change from the green to the purple. I mean, it's just like, it's insane. And then I, look what I stuck in. This one uh, cabbage didn't do good in the back, so I stuck a, a cucumber in, and the cucumber just finds its way out through, out to the light through the plants, and it's gonna attach to this. So it's pretty cool, cucumbers are like that. And the vines in general, it's amazing how they know where they're going. And this cauliflower is getting huge too. And more dino kale, more than we could ever eat. But that's the idea. We're over at the side garden now. I just have some things I wanna show you before I end the video. One is this blueberry. Look at the size of it. It's massive. It's got some nice blueberries on it too. And I'm going to prune this blueberry down and keep it more bushy after I get the fruit from it. And then over here, the, these are my favorite variety of raspberries. I think you can tell by how many I've allowed to grow. And I've got them all trellis in the middle. This is gonna be going to be my sea of black cap raspberries. And now that the fruit is about this size here, I wanna make sure that I'm coming through and watering it as much as I can, because we need a lot of water for all this berry production if you wanna make sure we're getting good, juicy, big, delicious berries. And then right next to you right there, we've got a Asian pear tree, where we're trying to get some pears on this one this year. And Asian pears seem to do well for us. And we've got some nice pears here, but then the cuculeo is biting some of them. So we may have to spray this one a little, a little more in the future with the, with the kaolin clay powder. That's all it is, it's just clay. Some of them down here aren't bit. But it, it, all it is is just clay. It's just super, super fine clay. So you could eat it uh, even up to the day harvest. Some of these berries are getting bigger, getting closer to ripening. But my good blueberries plants are the ones that right ahead that I'm gonna show you. Here's one of my big blueberry bushes. This one just produces so much for me. And blueberry bushes are so cool because these things will live to, live to like 40, 60, 70 or so years old. So get them in now. Make sure you're getting harvest as soon as you can because 10 years from now, you're just gonna go out there and be like, thank you. you know, thank God that I planted this so that I can just continually get the fruit from it. And behind me, I've got more gooseberries. This plant is absolutely loaded. Just like I mentioned with some of our other fruits, now that we have all the fruit production on here, we need to make sure we're staying on top of the watering. We gotta do that. And then behind me, I've got the blueberry plants that have even more production than the one that I just showed you. The one that I just showed you looks like it's, it's, it's a very healthy plant. It has a good balance of leaves and fruit. While this one just has a really lot of fruit. A little less leaves, but you know, and a ridiculous amount of fruit. And look how close they're getting. So close. So like I talked about, once berry season starts with like strawberries, then it's raspberries, then it's currants, then it's black cap raspberries, then it's gooseberries, then it's blueberries. So I mean, if you can plan and time things correctly and you have the space, you could be eating berries for such an extended season. And berries are one of my favorite things to eat flavor wise, but they're also so good for you. So many antioxidants and just overall an incredible, incredible superfood, berries themselves. So let me bring you to this blueberry here before I let you go. And this is my monster blueberry. It's got the big ones. I think this might be the Chandler, I forget. So look at that with all the blueberries down there. So why do I get so excited about blueberries and strawberries and stuff? Well, it's because they take almost little to no work, especially blueberries. This thing I put in a couple of years ago, you know, I water it only at this time of the year when it needs some water. Besides that, I make sure I keep a nice thick wood chip mulch at the bottom because this wood chip mulch is gonna create the perfect environment to hold in moisture, to create the mycorrhizae association. So it's still a little dry down here. I still need some water. But without the, without the wood chips, it'd be even more dry. And it looks like Tuck wants to get in the middle of stuff because 
This guy is really the best. He's the MVP. He's, uh, he's really the leader of the channel. He's the inspiration and he's our number one guy. So again, spam the comments with some heart, hearts for Tuck if you love seeing him in the videos and if you just love him being a part of the channel. Uh, now let's check out these last thing before I let you go and it is these red fleshed apples. So we're hoping we get some good red fleshed apples. I cannot wait to see what the inside of it would look like. It's like a pink red apple and they're supposed to be a great flavor too. So again, the curculios hit these hard. We're trying to balance out of making sure we're getting some good fruit while also doing it as naturally as we possibly can. That's today's video, growers. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. I hope me and Tuck inspired some of you guys to get things in the ground. Some of your perennials, maybe some strawberries, maybe some raspberries, some currants, some blackberries, or just something that's gonna provide you uh, a harvest in the future that you're gonna be really thankful for. And something that's also gonna provide your health you know, a nice benefit. So if you guys enjoyed the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, share with your friends. Don't forget to check out the merch down low. And also, whenever you're shopping on Amazon, do not forget to start your shopping with our Amazon affiliate link. I'm gonna put it right in the description. Me and Tuck wanna thank everyone who's already doing it, who's using this Amazon affiliate link whenever you're shopping. Again, it's a big help for us. It's super easy to do and it doesn't cost you anything. So me and Tuck will be back uh, in a little while with another video, but I'm gonna clip in some stuff here where I have some of the harvest and stuff because I didn't wanna harvest things then just leave them to the side. I wanted to make sure I'm harvesting everything at once. So we'll be back at you real soon with another one. Me and Tuck. Thanks for watching, guys. We 